in the 70s, the, the whole situation had settled into an acceptance that this was going to go on for a long time. And everyone lived it as a normal way of life. That is, uh, streetlights not working, being the place being dark at eight o'clock, bars downtown not being open. And people had retreated into getaway situations where they went to clubs rather than bars because they, they would know everybody who was there. Um, they re it really was hard, cold, bitter, and exactly what Belfast deserved. <laughs> well, it was a city that lived totally in hypocrisy, in my view. Uh, the hypocrisy that all was all right and that you could uh, treat uh, one group of citizens appallingly and and that they would ignore it forever and that you could be smug about respectability and decency and religion um, whilst ignoring deliberately inflicted hardship That had to end one way or another. It was intrinsic and part of the whole deal and couldn't last. At no point am I uh, approving of uh, the violence that surrounded it, but at a certain point, things become so entrenched. There's only the, the violence comes out of the situation. The repression is a form of violence. And I, I felt that it seemed more natural that Belfast was closed. Was there a large element of dehumanization? Well, always in a sectarian situation there is. You, uh, if you define someone as the other, you're saying they're not as human as us. Um, it's you dehumanize them and you end up dehumanizing yourself because you feel that way. I mean, this is the tragedy of the North of Ireland is that you've got two groups of people who are immensely generous and decent within their own communities and sometimes towards the other community, but mostly institutionally and collectively, the communities remain aloof from each other and regard each other as less than themselves. 